The use of drones in YouTube videos like the ones that I normally make have become very commonplace these days. And almost every time I include drone footage in a video, someone will ask me what drone that I use. Now, after only a couple of years of flying, I'm certainly no expert, but I would like to share some of what I've learned and give you a little behind the scenes look into how and why I use drones in my videos, which drones that I use, and I'm gonna show you two ways that I've retrieved my drone when I got it stuck up in a tree. I hope you'll stick around and check it out. Dig drive, DIY. Drones are a ton of fun, and when I started making YouTube videos a couple of years ago, I was tickled to have an excuse to justify buying one. But I do wanna mention this right off the bat. If you use a drone for commercial use, like a monetized YouTube channel, then you're legally required to get an FAA Part 107 license, which makes you a certified drone pilot. Now there's a ton of information online related to this, so I won't go into great detail, but basically you are required to take a $175 two hour test and pass with a minimum of 70% to get your drone pilot certification. In order to force myself to get it done, I took a 16 hour online course that prepared me for the test, but there's a ton of options out there to get yourself ready for it. So the test is pretty easy to pass if you've prepared properly. And overall, it's just better to be legal than to be sorry, I think. Oh, and you're also required to register your aircraft with the FAA too, so. I just wanted to make that little disclaimer before I talk about all this. Let's start with how and why I use drones. I feel like drone footage can sometimes be overdone and overused, so I try to keep it to a minimum, and I think it should serve a purpose in the story you're trying to tell, rather than just using a bunch of footage because you flew the drone that day. I'll sometimes have a 20 minute flight and only use 20 seconds of it in a video. So I use my drone for three main reasons. Number one is for establishing shots. This is usually a wide shot that shows you where I am and what I'm doing. It helps the viewer see the scope of a project or what the overall landscape looks like from a distance. And these can be really handy when you change locations in a video as well. Number two, it's a flying camera. And a lot of times it's way easier than moving a tripod around. When I'm trying to get something done on a project and I'm moving around the work site a lot or doing a repetitive task, then I can fly the drone for 10 or 20 minutes and build out lots of different shots and angles in a short amount of time. And you've got to have a pretty good drone too. And you, you have to be confident that it will hover and stay in the same spot and be stable. But it's much quicker than jumping in and out of a machine to move that camera around. But then I'll mix in those drone shots with other long range tripod shots or equipment mounted shots as well. So you just need to make sure that when you're flying close to the ground, you don't hit a machine that you're operating. That would be really embarrassing. The third way I use my drone is to help create a unique perspective of what I'm doing. One of my favorite shots here is the overhead looking straight down. There's no way that you'd ever see this type of angle if you were just there in person on a job site. So I think it really adds to the overall production value of the video to include views or angles that aren't available from a standard vantage point. And getting a unique shot means I've also tried to use the drone in a creative or clever way. So I wanted to share two of my favorite examples where I used an interesting perspective to transition from a handheld shot to a drone shot, hoping it would make the video more entertaining and engaging to watch. I love the challenge of trying to do these types of shots in the videos. This is what makes videos fun for me to create because I cook up these ideas in my head of how it should look, but I have no idea how to actually produce it sometimes. And a lot of it's done in the edit. So you just have to figure it out and that can be a lot of fun. But in the sequence you're watching now, I transitioned twice from handheld to drone, and then at the end, back to the handheld. And the ultimate goal for me is to make the viewer wonder how it was done. Okay, so here's another one where I transitioned from a handheld talking head shot to an establishing drone shot. It's fun, right? If I could make videos with just the drone, I would do it. But remember, there is no audio from a drone. And if you fly within close proximity of what you're doing on the ground and you're filming, you'll ruin those ground shots because these things buzz like crazy and they are noisy. So it can be a lot to manage, but those are a few of the examples I have on how and why I use drones in the videos that I make. All right, so next 
I want to talk about what drones I have. I started out with the Mavic Mini, and this is a great entry-level drone, and it has a ton of features for what it is and the price. So I got it with the Flymore kit, which includes extra batteries and this case. And to be honest, the compact size is what drew me to the Mini in the first place. I mean, this is so easy to take anywhere, even in a backpack. And the DJI Mini is just one of the most pro-level, small, entry-level drones that you can get for that price point. And I think it's a perfect first drone for someone that's serious about making high quality videos too. It, it takes great video up to 2.7K resolution and all the drone shots in every one of my videos up until about two months ago were all shot with this drone. Now there's a newer model out there called the Mini 2. So you can find the original Mini here pretty cheap now, especially if you find a refurbished one, you can get them even cheaper. It may have been crashed, but yeah, as you can see, my last flight was a little rough on this one. So, uh, and that's a downside to a drone being this small. It's really susceptible to the wind. You know, I was trying to let it hover above the barn as I pulled the backhoe out to get this cool overhead shot. And it started to drift towards the trees. I looked down and I saw it on the screen, but I couldn't save it in time and it hit the tree and fell down to the stones. And well, that was the last time it flew which is the reason that I now have this drone. It's another DJI, but this one is called the Mavic Air 2S. It's about twice the money as the Mini, but I really have been impressed with the capabilities. This one is refurbished by the way, which makes it a little cheaper. But the main feature advantage for me of this one is that it's heavier and it's much more powerful, meaning it's better at dealing with the gusty winds that we always have around here. Maybe you can hear them now, but it has a 4K camera and it's got a one inch sensor. And it's got some really cool flight mode features that enable it to fly by itself automatically in these certain patterns, which is great for me when I've got my hands full or when I want a pro level shot. I've used some of those automatic modes to film us when we were all ice skating. You might've seen that. I can skate and hold the remote control in my hand, but I can't skate and fly a cinematic drone pattern. So this worked out perfectly so far for me. It's a really cool feature. And again, I got the fly more kit which includes extra batteries and this case, which is perfect when you wanna do multiple flights in a day and you're out in the field, you can't go back anywhere to charge. But lastly, one of the things that made me choose this Air 2S over say the new Mini 2 is that it has obstacle avoidance in three different directions, forwards, backwards, and down, which means that it's supposed to be less likely to crash into things like trees, trees for me, Trees for me is the thing, that's my nemesis. But the obstacle avoidance has already helped me and prevented several crashes, so. But it's not always foolproof as I'm gonna show you here in just a minute because the last thing I wanted to share was two ways that I've retrieved my drone when it gets stuck in a tree for no reason. I've used the ball method and the bucket method. I've been sitting on this for a couple of years now and I've never had a place to put it in a video. All right, so I was flying the drone, Troy's drone, and I got it stuck up there in that tree. Is it still blinking? Yeah, it's yeah. still blinking. Yeah, oh yeah, I see it. Yeah. Hey, see it blinking up there? It looks like a firefly. Okay. All right, we'll see if Nate can knock it out of the tree. From where it was, yeah. it's more it's precariously hanging. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to have, remember, we'll have to have this taut enough to catch Get it, but right. not too taut enough to make it bounce out. You ready? Wait. That's great. Oh, 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 I've hit it twice in a row now. Come it's on. gonna. The problem is, it's gonna hit a limb, yeah. and it's not gonna be very. Uh, it's gonna bounce down out of the tree. Right. I don't see it. Heads up. Oh God, I need that small. I need that smaller. Okay. Don't forward. whatever you do, don't let it fall on your head. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. That, that would not be good. No. Right. Oh. Maybe we should practice catching the ball. Okay. Keep it taut. Oh, here it comes! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> awesome work! Holy crap. I think it's fine! Yeah, I think it's, it's fine. fine! We got it! It's fine! I did it clear over from Nate's house. I was almost a mile away when I flew it in the tree. That was stupid. <laughs> Oh yeah! So I got lucky with that one. Since it was already close to falling out of the tree, 
and thanks to my dad and brothers, we got it down in really no time. My brother Nate actually has pretty good aim, fortunately. So the next tree topper one you're gonna see happened just last week when I was making the arson video in the park. This is the new Mavic Air 2S that is supposed to have obstacle avoidance. And I found out you can't trust it 100% of the time. So the pilot needs to watch and keep an eye on what they're doing. You're always supposed to keep an eye on your drone, but check it out. Well, that's a pretty big screw up on my part. It's supposed to have obstacle avoidance going down. So I don't know. So now the problem is, how am I gonna get this down out of the tree? Hello. Hey, John, it's Neil. I got a little bit of a challenge myself. All right, I'm on my way there. All right, bye. Thanks, bye. Yeah, but you gotta get the combine out and everything. Thank you, Aaron. So the bucket truck method only works when you can get the truck to the tree. And in this case, I was very lucky. Lucky that the truck just barely reached, but even luckier that I can make a phone call and have access to a truck like this within minutes and no questions asked. That fact isn't lost on me one little bit. So I wanna thank my cousins for allowing me that option for sure. So there you have it. Two different ways I was able to get my drone down when it had decided to nest up in a treetop. They got a mind of their own sometimes, but that's gonna wrap up my behind the scenes look into my drones and how and why I try to use them to boost my production value and hopefully make a better video to watch. Be sure to let me know down below in the comments if you've had any drone experience or mishaps, I don't wanna feel alone, or let me know what you do like or don't like about drone footage in these videos. So the feedback can only help me to make them better. And I'd like to thank you so much for doing that and for clicking on this video. I hope that you liked it. And if I'm lucky, I will see you in the next one. Take care. What do you think about this whole light situation? I'm just experimenting. Does it look good? Or here's the regular shop lights without, the, without those lights. Does this look better? It seems like it's kind of cool. All right, I gotta start editing this video. <laughs>